Right. So I'm just going to dive into it, and then we can be done with this quickly. Um, so what is the Thunderbolt anyway? And um, according to Intel, it is the USB-C that does it all, which hints to a few things. First of all, that it's uh, I.O. technology, that it's fast, maybe, because it's USB-C, that it uses the USB-C connector, and that it might be a bit confusing, because you know it's a Thunderbolt technology, but it's a USB-C that does it all. Um, but we get to that. So um, it was first introduced in 2009, a slight peak. Um, it was first shipping in the MacBook Pro in 2011. It was initially based on like fiber optics and you know like sending the signal over as, over the wire in like light signals. But they backtrack on this, and now everything is like just electric signals. Um, it was already back then quite fast with like PC Express Gen 2 and DisplayPort 1.1. And it used the mini display for connector at the very beginning. And then there's a second version of that in 2013, um, which actually kept the same speed on the PCI Express, uh, bumped the display port to 1.2, but still used the same connector. Um, and I think you know, the Thunderbolt 3 that we're currently at um, is implemented by the Alpine Rich controller that I think is currently in most laptops that you know, ship Thunderbolt 3. Um, which is the standard I've now, I think. Um, and there, they upped the specs. And there's a new version of the Thunderbolt controller, of the f of Thunderbolt 3 controller out there called Titan Rich, which is being rolled out now after, after more, but it's not that widespread yet. Um, oh, yeah, and uh, Intel made it because the adoption of Thunderbolt still is not as great as I think Intel wanted it to be. They made it in 2007 and announced that from 2018 on, it is a royalty-free standard. And they're even going to put it, I think, with Whiskey Lake or so. I'm not entirely sure. With some, with some new chip, they're going to put the Thunderbolt controller on the CPU die. So basically forcing adoption <laughs> because you will get it anyway. Um, yeah, and so the current version is Thunderbolt 3, and it uses the USB Type C connector, which will it's it's confusing people. I can tell you, um, it's the speed got up to like double the speed of the former former one, so it's like 40 gigabits per second. It can up to deliver up to four PCI Express Gen 3 lanes. Um, it can do DisplayPort 1.2 or in Titan Rich 1.4. Um, which, you know, if you think about, like, this, the speed is going to stay the same, but DisplayPort 1.4 can actually drive 8K displays. So there's actually a bottleneck. So if you do that over Thunderbolt, you might not be able to drive the display at full speed and have a dock at all. So this is a bit of a funny thing, but whatever. Um, it does do native USB 3.1. You can daisy chain up to six devices, and you can also charge your laptop while you're connecting your I/O, which is really cool. So you have potentially only one cable to the laptop and charge the laptop, and also have the dock and the display and everything running. Um, also, what is new with version three is you got security modes, <laughs> which, if you think about that, it's actually PCI Express that's over the, you know, that's going over Thunderbolt is actually maybe not a bad idea. Um, and the main usage is, I think, docs. You know, you can also use it for external graphics, which people already do. Um, you can do it for networking, and a lot of people. I mean, some people use it for collecting a shit ton of storage when they're like on the road and doing video editing or something. Um, and I mean, there's very simple graph of how that actually is connected. So you have the CPU and you have your plot platform controller hub, I think. Um, and so the, the Display Port either comes directly from the internal graphics, or if you have an NVIDIA or something, you can also go from the external graphic. And you get the PCI lanes. It can, like in some models, they don't connect the full four lanes. It can, can also only be only two, and sometimes can be very tricky to find out what you actually have. You might have to actually ask the manufacturer, because they don't specify. Um, and then it all goes over this you know, Thunderbolt um, I.O. And then on the Thunderbolt controller, on the device, it can split out the PCI Express lanes uh, or the display port or both, depending on what device you have. Um, one funny thing is that, you know, 
currently with the with the Alpine Ridge controller, if you have an Alpine Ridge controller in in a, de a device like a dock and you connect it to a USB C port, nothing will work. Nothing will happen because it's a different technology. Um, but if you have a Titan Ridge USB dock, there's a fallback mode, which I think I have somewhere here. Yeah, in Titan Ridge they have a fallback mode, so it can act as a USB sync. So if you connect your Titan Ridge Thunderbolt dock to a USB C port, which is not a Thunderbolt port, it will also work in a fallback mode, which I think adds to the confusion. Like I mean, it's, yeah, um, I think it's it's. It's a hell uh, of a confusion sometimes because here's my prime example for why this thing is really confusing. And this is the current T4 ATS from Lenovo. Um, and you see that there is the USB Type C port that has this the power logo next to it. And then you see this kind of whatever it is, it's the proprietary thing. And here you see this flash thing next to it. And you know, if you were to connect this thing to your dock, where would you connect it to? I mean, you know, this is the port, this is the, this is the Type C connector, right? So you would maybe connect it to this thing. But you know, this is actually not a Thunderbolt port. This is just a plain USB port, and this is the actual Thunderbolt port, which doesn't even look like a USB C port because it's their proprietary whatever thing. Um, so yeah, I've got. I'm not kidding, I've got people writing to me like, you know, my Thunderbolt is broken or your software is broken, doesn't work. And I'm like trying to debug. The first time I actually tried to debug the whole thing and I was like, wait, just a stupid question. Did you plug it into the left port or the next to the left port? And he was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I plugged it into this thing and everything's working now. It's like, oh, yeah, shit. Um, yeah, so I mean, for example, here also, this USB Type C is not a Thunderbolt one. These two are Thunderbolt ones, right? So logos matter, which is really, yeah. And the, the ironic bit now, if you had a Titan rich Thunderbolt dock and you would do the same mistake, it would somewhat work, but it would not work at full speed because you would be using USB but not Thunderbolt speed. So you get the display and you get the dock, but you don't get the full, yeah, it's. You know, anyone. Uh, it's confusing because Thunderbolt also has different connection modes, also different alternate modes, as you know, USB plain USB Type C also has. So it can be USB only if you plug in a USB device. It can be uh, Display Port only if you plug in a Display Port device. Um, it can do both, or it can run at full Thunderbolt free speed. Um, and you can even like in most computers firmware and BIOS, or if you whatever, you can actually set the Thunderbolt controller in these modes. You can say, like, I want the Thunderbolt controller to be only USB, and then if you connect the Thunderbolt device, it won't work. Or you can say, I want only DisplayPort for security measurements. If you go to a conference or whatever, DEFCONF, and you don't want to, yeah. Um, and to make things even worse, there's also different controller modes. <laughs> so, like, in your, currently, if you're running Linux on your machine, you should make sure it's running in BIOS assist mode, which means that the ACPI is controlling the power, the Thunderbolt controller, and it's powering it and powering it down. If you connect the, if you connect the device, it will, the ACPI will power the Thunderbolt controller. If you deconnect it, the ACPI will actually shut the whole thing off. It will just disappear from the system. If you like do LSPCI, it will, be, it will look as if there is no Thunderbolt device in the computer. Um, and in the future, we will have native PCI hot plug, which is good because in theory it's, it, this is, it gives us more control. We can actually save a bit more power. But currently, with current kernels, um, you will actually consume a lot of power because we don't have the full power management patches merged into the kernel. So if, if you haven't turned your Thunderbolt controller into BIOS assist mode, it, it will always be there and it will always eat power. So don't do that. Um, yeah, and the security modes that were added to Thunderbolt 3 is the main thing that I actually uh, worked on because, you know, PCI Express can do DMA, so we can read and write memory from, like, stuff that you just plugged into your computer, which actually some people did a proof of concept, I think, with a MacBook Pro and the Thunderbolt 2 port or so. Um, so now, um, with Thunderbolt 3, there's new security modes um, that you can also set in the BIOS, 
everything that can, can be said. So you can have no security, which is basically what the old version was. Thunderbolt 2 did that, and Thunderbolt 1 did that. So like you connect the device, it will, if, you, if the device supports it, you will get the full PCI Express lanes, and you can do DMA to whatever you want. Um, and then there is um, two more Thunderbolt modes. One is called user, and one is called secure. And in both of these modes, what is new is basically that you as the user or as the system has to authorize devices before they can actually work. So you have connect the device and it will show up, but it won't connect the PCI lanes before the system actually says to the controller, yes, please connect the PCI Express lanes. Um, and in the secure mode, there's an additional step that we can actually authorize the device and also verify is the, is the device that um, we connected before. Um, in Windows, that's basically what it looks like. So in Windows, it, you, you get a bunch of dialog boxes because, you know, how, how do you then verify that the thing is actually, you know, how do you authorize the device? Um, you ask the user, right? So you get a box and say that there's a new Thunderbolt device connected. You click on OK. You get this thing like, OK, pluggable, whatever, something is connected. And then what do you want to do? Don't connect. Connect once. Connect always. Whatever. Um, but yeah, that's not, that's not what we did because you know, our designers basically said that you know, most people are just going to click yes anyway because you cannot make an informed decision on this because as a normal person who doesn't even know what PCI express lanes are, what, you know, whatever, what do you, what, what you, what do you want to answer to this, right? If you go to a conference and you connect your like, projector, you want the projector to work. And even if this was called like evil device, but it makes your projector work, then it will, you will just click OK, right? Because you want the projector to work. So yeah. So how is the, how is the stack on Linux? Well, first of all, you have the kernel. The kernel exposes uh, um, a sysfs the, 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 yeah, device tree, basically. It, it exposes um, the host and um, all the devices that you connect to under sysfs. And then there's a small little tool that we wrote called Bolt, which basically listens to U events and then exposes the devices on, uh, on Dbus. And then you can, from the command line, interact with the thing called Bolt Control or um, via GUI, via the GNOME shell or GNOME settings. And I'm, the idea was that other desktop environments could also use this daemon. I'm not sure if anyone actually integrated it yet. Um, so how does the kernel interface look? So the, the Thunderbolt controller gets exposed as two device nodes, actually. First, as, domains, as the, dom the domain controller. Uh, and here, you can actually read out the security level that was set in the BIOS. But you cannot influence it. But you can just read it out. And then this is the f there's always one device that represents the host, which will always be authorized. But you can read the name of the computer and stuff. And then any other device that is attached to the Thunderbolt bus will appear as the child of this device. And it has this node called authorized, or this property called authorized. And if you are in secure mode, it also has this property called key. And then you authorize the device by just writing one into this file. And once you have done this, the device will actually, con like the controller will connect the PCI tunnels, and the device will work. Um, this is irreversible, so once you connect to the PCI tunnels, there's no way of going back, so you cannot unconnect, the, you can unauthorize the device. It, once it's authorized, it's authorized. And if you are in secure mode, so the more secure operation mode, what you can also do is you can imprint a key into the non-volatile memory of the device. Um, and the first time you do this, you just basically imprint this, and on any subsequent connect, you can write your version of the key into like the device in the, into the property and then say to the kernel please connect this device but only if the key matches what we've previously written into the device so this is basically an identity verification of the device but i have to say most laptops or actually all laptops that i've ever had in my hands ship in secure mode, so by default, what you add in, in user mode. So, but by default, you don't get this key verification. By default, you only get the you know 
norm normal authentication. So, I mean, the device exposes a unique ID which we use to identify it, but I'm, if, if you were, you know, malicious, you could fake this device, I, the unique ID, and then we would authorize your evil device if it has the same unique ID as something that you previously authorized. Um, yes, so the Bolt daemon is a very small system daemon. It is normally not running. It only gets activated on demand by system D if it f if and you def if we find you have Thunderbolt hardware. So if you don't have Thunderbolt hardware, nothing is running. Um, and you have a DBoss API to manage devices, um, like for example, authorize or you know enroll devices. Um, we, we use Polkit to secure the DBoss API. Uh, we have a very simple database, which is basically file-based, where we store device names and device keys. Um, then we have uh, recently, I've added the DBus API also to force power the Thunderbolt controller. Because, so there's there's one hack in hardware, because if it's in, if the Thunderbolt hardware is in this BIOS assist mode, which is currently the default, you know the hardware will just completely disappear, and we won't even know that there's a Thunderbolt controller in the, in the system. So we cannot find out which security level the Thunderbolt controller is in, which we sometimes need to know. Or the firmware update daemon needs to know what firmware version the Thunderbolt controller is having. So we need to somehow like power the controller. And there is a the, in, on most laptops, there's a way to basically force power the controller. You just flip it on and then the BIOS will activate the Thunderbolt controller even though nothing is plugged in. And this is now exposed on DBus because the kernel API is not reference counted. So if I switch it on and the Thunder, like if Bolt Demon switches it on and the firmware update demon switches it on and then I switch it off but the firmware update demon wasn't done yet, then it's hanging, right? And that's exactly what's happened <laughs> a lot of times. So there's a bunch of uh, yeah, bug reports about this. Anyway, now there's a daemon API to force power the Thunder control, controller. Um, but the daemon itself doesn't do any policy decisions, so we just expose, like if you connect a new device, it will just show up on the bus, but it won't be authorized by the daemon by itself, because like Bolt does only provide the API, but it doesn't do any policy decisions. Um, yeah, this is the API. I, I skip over this. Um, yeah, there's a small command line tool called Ball Control where you can see what is currently connected and you can manage it. You can forget devices or enroll devices here. Um, but the important thing is that we have, um, like, the shell is, for GNOME, the shell is the policy maker. What that means is that it will listen to the device added signal of the daemon and then based on the current state of the, se of the session, um, it will either authorize the device or not. And currently it means that if the user is logged in and the session is unlocked and the user is an admin, we will just automatically enroll your device and connect it. Um, if the user is not an admin, you get a dialog box. Um, or if the session is locked, you get a notification like this. You get like, Thunderbolt device was connected, but not authorized. And then, um, yeah, you, there's also a little, little cable snake icon here. Um, because to connect the PCI lanes, this can actually take quite a bit. It can take up to 20 seconds on some docks because some cables are active cables, and then you need to authorize the cable before you authorize the dock. Um, so it can take a while, so we have this little status indicator that actually something is happening. Um, and then there's also a settings plugin where you can see the devices that have been previously authorized and you, if, you, if you connected it while you were locked, you can also authorize the device from there. Um, we also do firmware updates, so um, you can update the firmware in your cables <laughs> and in your docs. Um, yeah, it's not a joke, <laughs> sadly enough. Um, yeah, there's also a SysFS uh, interface for that. So you basically write the new firmware into like the non-active part and then you write another authenticate and then we update the firmware. And this works, hopefully. Um, and there's also recently added uh, into Network Manager host-to-host uh, -host, um, networking. So if you have a Thunderbolt cable, you can com connect two computers and it will create a network between them and then you can I don't know, transfer files or something. 
um, and that is basically the end. There's one more thing, obviously, because, you know, for example, if you have a Lux password set on your machine, then you're in early boot, and in early boot, the daemon doesn't run, so you cannot enter your Lux password via a keyboard that is attached to a, daemon, to a dock. Um, there is a new, so you need a very new kernel and a new firmware, then there is a new thing called boot ACL, where we can, from Linux, write UUIDs into the BIOS and say to the firmware, please, this device with this UUID, please authorize it, already on boot. So it works even in the BIOS, not only in early boot. But the problem is it's only, as you can see, there is only the UUID is no key. So there is no key verification done. So this is basically only available in user mode. So if you actually want to make sure that it's the doc that you initially authorized, then you can forget about this and you would have to go back to typing in the password on your normal keyboard, not on your doc keyboard. And yeah, I'm currently looking into, I mean, this is my current work, but I'm also looking into uh, eGPU support. It should in theory work, but of course in reality it doesn't really. Um, like last time I tried, Nuvo and NVIDIA drivers were both crashing when I connected the dock with the eGPU in it. Um, Intel supposedly, uh, um, AMD supposedly is a bit better, but I haven't tested this yet. Um, yeah, and that's it. Yeah, if anyone is interested in helping out on this, you know, currently I'm the only one working on that stuff. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> And I'm going to be done with it soon, and then I'm going to move on to something else. So if someone wants to help out. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> one minute. One question. Two questions. One. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um. Uh, sorry, I just dropped in basically, so I most likely missed it if you said it, but uh, did you do any work or have any looks on Pro Audio hardware that is also Thunderbolt ready? No. Because there is, but most likely it's not supported, okay. Yeah. Nope. That would be nice. <laughs> or write me an email, I see you. <laughs> okay, no, yeah, we'll do. Okay, thank you. Um, I was just wondering with the, the, these security keys, um, do you start generating for every device regardless of whether secure mode is enabled or do you only do that when secure mode is enabled? Only if, yeah, so if the secure mode is not enabled, there is not, there's no device file. So the, the SysFS key property is only there if secure mode is enabled. So. On mute. Um, so if you set a key on your cable and then you use it for another computer, depending on how does it stop working? It, it depends on the device. So some devices support multiple keys, you know, but for example, the eGPU dock, every time I put to Windows and authorize in Windows, I have to reauthorize it in Linux because it can only hold one key. Oh, I see. So you can like reset it. Yeah. So it's you not like no, completely no, no, you useless it. and no, forever you broken. <laughs> no, you reset it. Okay. Yeah, it's still annoying though because you basically it's basically like, oh my god, this device has changed identity because it can only hold one key, but whatever. Yeah. All right.